Hi there, my name is David Arundel, otherwise known as The Extraordinary Tourist, and in this video I thought I'd give you a quick behind the scenes look at how I made my entry for Real Illusions Lip Sync Animation Contest. They say crime doesn't pay. I don't know about that. What I do know is, fighting crime doesn't pay. Well, not enough anyway. That's why I'm looking for a day job. Something simple, perhaps in applied sciences. I do have some experience in water distribution as well. If you're looking for a water cooler valet, I'm your man. What you've just seen there is my entry into Real Illusions Lip Sync Animation Contest. The character that you see there is called Batstorm. Uh, he originally started out as a Batman cosplayer who decided to go into the business of fighting crime for himself, but the name Batman was already taken, uh, so he changed his name to Batstorm. My actual entry is based around a scene from one of the cartoons I did, and uh, just be aware that uh, these cartoons were made, I think, in 2008, and you're about to hear some really bad uh, text-to-speech voices from the first animated short that I did with this character where he's going into the employment office and looking for a job. So, here we go. A job? Yes. Something where I won't have to think too hard. Applied sciences, perhaps. All I have is a job in water management. Sounds great. I'll take it. Oh hey Nicholas, can I get you a water? Sure. You are so much cooler than our less water cooler valet. You notice that that storm was wearing a suit there, and that's one of the sort of jokes of the character is that he never takes his cowl off, no matter what. That's what the scene was based on, and where I got the idea from. Uh, next up, I'll go in and sort of show you the features of the actual character which I created in Character Creator 3. His whole outfit here, like the bodysuit, is a texture that I made, uh, including the cowl and the neck, and some of it is just recolored skin from the original character, like the original character is actually not wearing anything and I've just recolored the body. So I'll just have a quick look at the textures, you can see here the actual face, that's the texture that I did. So this is the main part of the body with the logo. And the ears on the cowl is actually a sculptured object that I made. It's literally the first thing I've ever sculptured in 3D many years ago. Specifically for this character, but not this version of the character. Uh, I had a 3D version of him in different software. So that is a sculptured piece that's sort of added into the top of the character's head there. And the rest of the outfit, uh, the gloves are pirate gloves that have been recolored. Uh, was that the boots? I think they might come from knights or something and they've been recolored black. The belt is definitely a pirate belt and the cloak is from the assassin's pack that's been recolored. And actually removed the hood that was on it. There you go, that's just a quick overview of the Batstorm character. So since this is a lip sync contest, I thought I'd show you how I started creating my animation and literally built the whole thing around my Batstorm character. So this was pretty much how I started from the beginning. I literally loaded up the character and then I had the idea for what I wanted the character to say by this point so I went straight to the Replica Studio plugin so the first thing I did was get my dialogue together and you can see my dialogue still in here I selected this stone character voice a couple of things I put in a pause in here because the full stop didn't stop him long enough and there's a couple of words that I changed for him to say it's more their phonetic spelling rather than how they're actually spelt 
such as this here. You've got if you're looking for a water cooler valet, so a is spelt U H instead of A because he wasn't pronouncing it right, and valet, which is spelt V A L E T, he wasn't pronouncing right, so I spelt that exactly how it's said or how it sounds more than how it's spelt. And the same here, you've got this word here, sciences, which is meant to be applied sciences. He wasn't saying science correctly, so I spelt that word phonetically. So that's what I went with. Just click the download button and hit export to Robert, which is the name of this character base. And the style I just did is auto and apply. And the Vizimi there, you can see all the words coming in here. You can see now. They say crime doesn't pay. I don't know about that. What I do know is fighting crime doesn't pay. Well, not enough anyway. So anyway, I heard that. So the next thing I did, I don't need replica anymore. So turn that off. And the very next thing I did was look for a talking motion like a pre-made one, I actually stumbled across one that almost worked exactly beat for beat with what he was saying with, and I only had to do sort of minif minimal modifications to it to suit the character. So there's this one here, I just applied that. So if you watch that motion as is, you'll see it matches up pretty well with what he's saying. They say crime doesn't pay. I don't know about that. What I do know is, fighting crime doesn't pay. Well, not enough anyway. That's why I'm looking for a day job. Something simple, perhaps in applied sciences. I do have some experience in water distribution as well. If you're looking for a water cooler valet, I'm your man. So I did change the end of that in the final animation so that he puts his hands on his hips and looks a bit more proud of the fact that he's the man for the job of water cooler valet. You see in there his hand isn't touching his hip so I had to adjust that. You'll notice his arms are too close to the sides so whenever I animate this character uh, I always have to go in and just change the arms so that he's not got them straight down because it makes this, his sort of shoulders and sides look odd. So I usually just Bring them out a little bit, like so. Comes to animating faces, I mostly use the face key editor, but I don't keyframe everything. I like to use these expressions here and what I'll do is you see in the ex expression track down here uh, all of these put keyframes basically in the muscle expression. I'll just start building up what I think his expression should be based on what he's saying. I say on this start bit he sort of has a very open sort of face. So I'll go into one of the surprise things. <laughs> Maybe somewhere around say is where his eyes would be fully open. So I'd look for one of these. It's not particularly happy so I don't want a smiling one. Maybe something like that. <laughs> Check in default at the beginning so that you can see. <laughs> Pause, bring him back down to default. Now with what he's saying, he's going, I don't know about that. So that's more of a thinking kind of thing that he might say. So I'll go into something where he's going to have his eyes sort of closed. More squinty. Maybe that one. Yeah, that's better. He's more squinty. I don't know about that. Put another keyframe there. In the blank space, put a default. And he's going, What I do know, which might bring back his eyes and face to a more open sort of look again. That one. What I do know is. Bring back to the default there. 
fighting crime doesn't pay is sort of more thinking again, so we might go with this more squinty look. Crime doesn't pay. So you can see how that's sort of starting to develop his facial expressions. If we play that back. They say crime doesn't pay. I don't know about that. What I do know is fighting crime doesn't pay. Well, not enough anyway. So that's pretty much how I do facial expressions, or how I did the facial expressions in my animation. From there I'll just move the eyeballs around. He spends a lot of time looking at the camera, so that was something that I did. I look at camera, and then when he's off thinking, over here, he'd set him free of the camera. Yeah, and then any time he wasn't looking at the camera, I might just move his eyeballs around. But yeah, that's pretty much how I did all his lip syncing and facial expressions for my entry. Here we go, this is the actual my entry and this is the view that you saw in the actual finished piece. What I was going to just show you is how I literally did build this scene around him. So he's meant in the final piece he's sitting, or supposed to be sitting, but you can see in here he's actually still standing. And I've just raised up some of the furniture to make it look like he's sitting uh, because I didn't want to sort of mess up all the animation and I really wanted that view going out this door exactly how I had it because originally he wasn't sitting down he was just standing this I was thinking that this desk here was more of a uh, reception area but Throughout the course of making this, it turned into a human resources department. And he's sitting for a job interview, much like in the original Go Animate animation that this was inspired by. And the whole set is an office set I bought Office Collection 1 it's from. You can see how I've sort of moved everything around. So he's out the front here. This is where all the office stuff was. I put in all this wall stuff, this door, and the only other thing I wanted to highlight, you can see these two 2D cartoon characters here, they're just, um, they're taken from the original water cooler animation that I did in Cartoon Animator, which this particular entry is referencing, and since you can't see this character walk in, I didn't worry about the fact that there's no door there. You see, he just moves straight through the wall. So those two characters are just exported from Cartoon Animator as a pop video and brought into here on a whatever it's called Deaf Image Plane. You see, they're just sort of going through the same motions that they were in the original animation, standing next to the water cooler here. And this is the robot water cooler ballet. And this is actually an avatar of myself. And the only other thing I did in here was with the camera, is adjusting the depth of field on that so that characters in the background would be slightly blurred because I wanted them to be in there, but I didn't want them to be too distracting. I just wanted the reference there so that people who sort of know what I'm referencing would see that and sort of get an extra buzz out of it. And most of the lighting is just the standard lighting, which I've just moved around a bit so that this area would be better lit. But I did put in an extra light, an extra spotlight, which is just here to stop this computer from casting a shadow across, of, across him. And this light actually dims as he leans into it. And you see him move across like that. It dims a little bit so that uh, the lighting when he's there isn't too different from when he's sitting up straight. So as he moves across this dims and then as he moves back it brightens up again. So here we have the final animation which I edited together in Shotcut which is a um, open source free video editing platform 
and I've pretty much just exported my clip from iClone into here, did a little bit of color grading on it and added a vignette just to take the harshness of the corners off there. You see the color grading I went for like a blue sort of tint so I didn't really like the green tint that it had coming out of uh, iClone but beyond that I didn't really do much else. You can see in the timeline it's just all that clip and then you get to here and it's the end title card and then my own title cards that come into play. I did obviously add a bit of sound design with office noises. I uh, just added my standard office ambient sound noises just in the background just to make it feel like a real environment. But that was pretty much it and that's pretty much the entire sort of process I went through to make my entry for the lip sync contest. So there you go, I hope you found that behind the scenes video interesting. Uh, good luck to everyone who's entered the competition. If you want to catch up more with what I'm doing in my own work, uh, maybe check out my animation and video blog. And I've also recently started a new resource called The Lazy Animator, which has got uh, a few tutorials mostly based around Cartoon Animator at the moment, but I will be expanding that out into uh, different applications as well. So if that's something that sounds interesting to you, uh, you can check those out at animationvideo.com and thelazyanimator.com. So uh, that's it for now. Till the next video, I will see you later. Bye for now.